All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to update you guys on the hurricane season, but also on our current tropical cyclones as well. So we're gonna be updating you guys on all of these things in today's video. Now, before we get into the video, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also be sure to destroy the like button and also leave a comment down below because those two things help me out so much. For today's comment of the day, I want to know what your current thoughts are on the hurricane season. Are we going to end up with a below average hurricane season for the first time in a while? Or do you think that this will catch up and be an above average season this year? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and we're going to update you guys on the current events first off. And as you can see, now we have three tropical disturbances. So we're going to start out with this back one. We've downgraded from a 70% chance down to a 40% chance. So odds have dramatically shifted for this back end one. We do have this brand new middle one that has a 30% chance of development. And this one didn't exist as of yesterday morning. So that is obviously um, a big jump from nothing to something. Here we go, number three. This one has a 10% chance of development over the next five days. That is a 10% drop off in the percentages. So that is where we're at right now. The reason I decided to make an overall hurricane season update is because it seems like none of these are gonna pop off within the next 24 hours. So I can afford to wait until tomorrow to update you guys on these current events, especially because of the fact that they're not gonna change too much between the next 24 hours uh, and now, hopefully not. Now here is our current sea surface temperatures. And as you can see, uh, we do have in there in the Pacific, if you take a look, we do have um, a bit of a La Nina, obviously. We have those blues indicating very cold waters there. Uh, you can see those shapes there in the middle, uh, eastern portion there of the Pacific. That is our La Nina. But if you take a look at the Atlantic, uh, which we'll be able to zoom into in just a moment, it's overall warm, but we're gonna go over most of the individual areas in just a moment. Here's the seven day change. And as you can see, things have cooled actually more than warmed across the globe. That has been the trend for a couple of months now. We've seen an overall cooling trend. Um, very interesting. It's kind of going with that La Nina. We see that from time to time where that causes a lot of waters around it to cool down. Uh, but now we're talking about the Indian Ocean. Uh, we're talking about the Atlantic. Those are waters that typically aren't really impacted in that nature. Let's take a zoomed in look here at the Atlantic so I can talk about some more specific regions with you guys. Let's just start out with the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see, very warm waters compared to normal setup over the Gulf. That will obviously help tropical development as we see storms potentially move in here down the road. Obviously, we're pretty far from that happening, we think. But this will eventually happen from time to time. That is pretty much true in every hurricane season. The Caribbean is just warmer overall. Uh, all the way down to Central America and all the way northward to north of the Bahamas. We're taking a look at warmer waters overall for the Caribbean, uh, as well as a lot of the north, northern North Atlantic, I guess you could say, uh, north of Bermuda. The only area that we're really seeing cool waters is there offshore of the East Coast, as you can see, and then also offshore of Africa. That is our main development region, and that's actually going to have huge implications. The East Coast one won't really, but this area is where we see a lot of these storms start out. So to have those below normal waters could hinder some development early on for a lot of these storms. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at some charts here in a moment. We're going to take a look at our El Nino charts, our uh, North Atlantic charts, Gulf of Mexico charts, Caribbean charts, and even the Atlantic main development region charts as well. Then we're going to finally take a look at some dust and things of that nature in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that Nino 3.4 index chart. And really what this is, uh, is it's our area that we mostly view in the El Nino to measure if it's an El Nino or a La Nina. And in this case, you can see it has dropped significantly uh, as of recently. And we're in a neutral Enso as we speak right now, but it has had this kind of cooling and then a little bit of an uptick and then even more cooling trend. Uh, but you can see it never fully recovers back to where it was. So it is an overall cooling trend. Uh, long term that we're taking a look at and then uh, La Nina is expected for the most part maybe a very weak one if not a very cold neutral Enso which is uh, actually really good news for cold and snow lovers later down the road uh, obviously we'll save that for a different video here's the overall North Atlantic as you can see this has been on a warming trend so kind of opposite of the La Nina we've seen this one kind of warm cool a bit and then warm a lot more than it cooled uh, so we've seen this one going up, 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 and now where we're finally at is mostly above average waters throughout the entire Atlantic. 
Now, Gulf of Mexico here has also seen a warming trend as of late. Uh, even as even as I would say as late as mid July, we've seen below normal water set up over the Gulf of Mexico. But that has really changed over the past two weeks, or maybe even three, uh, as this area has just become one of the hotter spots in the Atlantic. And even the Caribbean here, as you can see, has popped negative as late as maybe even July 24th, but we've seen a significant warming trend since then, uh, and that's what's caused this area to be above average uh, as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. And even the Atlantic Main Development Region, this is an area that we were feeling quite confident would end the season really with just below normal waters because of how cold they were and how long they were cold. But we've seen this really turn around the last week or two to where we're now even looking at the positive direction. So if this trend continues, obviously that's very concerning looking towards uh, the rest of the hurricane season because these warmer waters are only going to help development looking forward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we need to talk about some Saharan dust. Now here we are taking a look here at the Saharan dust and this is actually from July 16th. So you can see this was very potent by then. We saw golds, even bright, bright whites indicating extreme dust there in the Atlantic offshore of Africa. Even some purples for the Gulf of Mexico, east of the Eastern Caribbean there as well. Uh, so this was pretty much widespread dust throughout the Atlantic. And as we take a look here at August 6th, the nighttime of August 6th, you can see we've seen a dramatic downturn in this dust. Now there's pretty much none throughout the Gulf, Caribbean, or anywhere like that. We see a little bit offshore of Africa, but probably about half as much as we saw before. And that is what has allowed for these tropics to really just pick up. And even looking days ahead, this is uh, August 11th, we can see that there's even less dust by this point. We see some purples, but that's not going to be potent amounts. It's going to be maybe a slight to moderate amounts of dust. Tropical systems can survive this. Uh, and then eventually, though, in the very long range of this model, we're going to take this with a grain of salt because this is very far out. Uh, so I am skeptical a little bit. But as we take a look towards August 16th, which is obviously pretty far away, we're taking a look here at some purples widespread throughout the Atlantic. This would definitely slow down the hurricane season again for mid-August, which would be very interesting because obviously we've already been dealing with a quieter hurricane season up to this point than what is typical. We saw a very active early portion to the hurricane season, but July was obviously a lull in that activity. And even the first week now of August has been a lull in that activity because we've seen none of these kind of potential tropical systems develop yet. So we'll kind of write down the first week of August as a very quiet period so far. But we're going to need to watch this very closely because we could see a quiet mid to late August, which would put August at a below normal hurricane month also, which would put us in a really good position to end the hurricane season with a below average hurricane season overall, which would be very interesting. It's been different than that. Obviously, the last few hurricane seasons, we've had extreme hurricane seasons. And this one has been very average, if not below average, which would be a nice change for many folks, obviously, that live in areas where hurricanes can affect them. Uh, this is very good news. And I saw a comment yesterday, talk, you know, talking about how this is, seems to be the case. And I talked about how it's such good news. I live along the East Coast as well. So I know how these affect people you know, in many different terrible ways. So it's just so good to see finally a quieter hurricane season after so many active seasons in a row. Very interesting. Uh, and I wonder if a quieter hurricane season translates to a more active winter. I wonder. Maybe that would be something we could look into a little bit because we've seen so many active hurricane seasons, but not so active winters. Maybe they kind of work in opposites. Who knows? Who knows? I don't usually believe stuff like that, but it is fun to look at. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we are at a four out of six here on the on the hurricane season. Obviously, we are uh, taking a look at you know the rest of August, September, and October, and even a bit of November can be involved in the hurricane season. So this is a pretty long range forecast, although we're already in it. So my confidence remains moderately high, but not super high. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think any of these disturbances will become hurricanes? And James Moore said, I believe one or two of these disturbances will become hurricanes. Very interesting there. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stint, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen 
Kernenthal. If you would like to be a part of this Patreon screen, that I could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Harry Farms one and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.